bonjour. Welcome back to Bienvenue. Uh, Maxwell Star's beer review. La review de bière. <laughs> Sorry for that. I uh, hope anybody there that speaks French isn't offended by this, but um, welcome back to Maxwell Star's beer review. We're going to take a look at Unibrew's Maudit tonight. Maudit is a strong beer on Lees, a uh, strong Belgian dark ale. Uh, quite. Not quite the same kind of Barrett Belgian Dark Ale as what um, the Trois Pistoles is. Um, I reviewed that a couple weeks ago. Trois Pistoles was like a, a very dark, dark 9% ale. Whereas this one is a red beer. And uh, it's perfectly named. Uh, a nice demonic red beer color uh, with uh, a name that in French literally means the damned. Um, as always, Unibrew has some awesome stories that go with um, the namings of the beers. Uh, this is uh, La Maudite, uh, fermented on yeast based uh, in the bottle. Goes down uncommonly smooth. One taste of this excellent beer will instill in you the highest respect and appreciation with its warm, for its warm, mellowing effect. Uh, the label on top of the bottle comes back from the legend of the Voyagers. It's a 1937 silver dollar that's got the French Voyagers on the front of it. Um, back in the early days during the fur trade, uh, uh, Francophone Voyagers or uh, explorers or fur traders would ex uh, travel across the vast um, expanse of the Canadian wilderness in order to meet up with natives and their different tribes spread, ac uh, spread it across modern day Ontario, Manitoba in order to bring back furs that were trapped uh, for the, you know, in the name of like the Hudson's, well not, this is pretty, it's Hudson's Bay Company, but whatever. Um, the Legend of the Chase Gallery, or the Flying Canoe, uh, comes from uh, one holiday season, a group of homesick voyagers made a deal with the devil himself in order for them to get back to their families for just one night. Now, the, 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 the catch, however, is that if they were to speak the Lord's name or anything of the sort, they, the canoe would disappear and they would fall to their deaths. So, they made it to, they got this uh, flying canoe from the devil himself. He flew, they flew back to, I believe, Montreal. Does it say anything about that on the box itself? We were traveling so fast that we uh, passed Montreal, an area, before we could stop. But we still made it to the party in no time flat. Canoeing down La Blanche like could never prepare us for this. Joe the Cook of the Flying Canoe. Anyway. Um, they made it to the party in no time flat. They enjoyed the time with the relatives. And they're on their way back. I think uh, one of the guys, they tried to restrain him before he was able to say anything, but... While he uh, he looked over the side of the boat, and just as he looked down and saw how far above the ground they were, he said, Jesus Christ. And just as you know it, poof, splat. <laughs> Whether that's the accurate story or not, um, it is the legend uh, that goes, and it actually was depicted during the 2010 um, Vancouver Olympics opening ceremony for the Winter Olympics. Uh, if you rewatch that, you'll actually see the bit where they're rolling the flying canoe across the moon. Um, anyway, so yeah, before without further ado, let's crack this one open and uh, take a look. Where you got enough universe you know, cap stored away? It's a nice little pour into my sniffer glass. There's lots of smoke pouring out of that bottle, by the way. I didn't. Uh, Put that up to the camera at first. So look at that. Nice thick, little over a finger head, and a cloudy brown amber base. The head itself's got like a an off yellow kind of uh, color to it. It's nice and thick, and it looks almost angry. Mmm. Let's give it a sniff. So right off the top of that, you can tell there's a lot of fruit smells and a lot of spices. For spices, you get your coriander, your clove. There's actually quite a bit of clove in there, but for 
for fruits, you get the things like, for smells, you get your lemon, orange, some touches of like mango, peach. It actually smells really nice. And you also get like a hint of banana in there as well. And it's all that, that fruity smells mixed in with that uh, the clove bitterness. And there's almost, there's, there's no alcohol smell to this at all. Head didn't stick around long, but it's a surprise that there was any head at all given this is 8%. So that's, that's pretty good. And it looks beautiful sitting there in the glass. Look at that. Anyway, let's give this a taste. Oh, wow. A nice sweet malty character on the back of the palate, which comes off quite spicy and fruity. The spices hit the tip of your tongue with that coriander and a touch of tingling cinnamon burn on the tip. In the back you get your lingering clove and your citrus tastes like your your orange or lemon. Maybe a touch of grapefruit or pineapple. And a little bit of white grape sweetness. And the, the 8% ABV in this thing is matched perfectly. It's actually really, really good and you can't taste the alcohol. I don't even feel a little bit of burn in it. Imagine if I drank this fast enough I might, but it's so smooth. It comes off feeling like it's a little on the thick side. It comes off feeling like it's um, like medium to heavy. It's not like stout heavy. It's just like heavy ale heavy. Mmm, that tastes so good. I don't want to come off as sounding biased, but I don't see it so good so so much. But anyway, it's just it's got this really nice lemon tartness to it, and a white grape sweetness that lingers along with all the rest. Hmm. Let's check and see if they're still recording. And it leaves your mouth feeling dry along with that bitterness, and you want to take another sip. And it's deceptively smooth for such a high alcohol beer. Very dangerous. Damn. <laughs> All right, um, I'm gonna sit down with this one for a bit, and I'll come back with some thoughts. Be right back. And we're back with Unibrew's Moldit. So what did I think about this one? Damn. It's a good beer. Um, it's got a nice yeasty dryness that makes you like beg for another sip. And it's so deceptively smooth, so sinfully smooth, that it, you keep drinking it, not fully realizing in this one that it's actually an 8% damp beer. <laughs> um, this one is one that will truly sneak up on you. Um, I, I actually really like this one, but let's be totally honest. Um, I don't quite like it as much as like uh, Trois Pistoles or um, La Fin de Monde. But just for the reason this, I find them much more enjoyable beers. I still enjoyed this one. And um, I was kind of iffy on buying a, a six pack of these ones. Uh, just because I didn't know if I was actually going to drink all of them. Uh, I think maybe what I'll do is I might put one or two aside and see if they'll sell her. I don't know, I might buy a full-size bottle of that. We can get this here in six packs and in the big bottle like, uh, like my Fin de Monde over here. But, um, you didn't say it was Fin de Monde. Yeah, well, you can get the, get the Modit in that size bottle, but, to be totally honest, I, it's not my favorite of the, uh, the Unibrew lineup. Um... Which would either be one of those two? Uh, but what can I give this for a rating? Uh, it's really good. Um, the bros on Beer Advocate gave it an A+. Plus. I think it's got an average of A- minus or something. I'm going to lead towards more of the A- minus category and give this like a... Oh, heck, a 
a high 4.0 out of 5. Neely actually doesn't really like this one here because it's incredibly spicy, and it is. It's a very spicy beer. That the, it's it's um it's spice first, and then you get your uh, you get your malts, and then there's a little tiny touch of some kind of bitterness. It's almost coffee like, maybe a touch earthy, but it's a very good beer, and uh, it's got a nice white grape pear that uh, kind of lingers a bit along with that yeasty spiciness. It's really good. Um, so yeah, high 4.0 out of, me, out of 5 for me. I'd suggest checking it out if you haven't already and if you have, good on ya. Um, anyway, thanks for watching Maxwell Stars Beer Review. Hope you enjoyed watching this review and uh, if so, I'll talk to you later. There's plenty of beer in the fridge. I think I'm a little overstocked right now. <laughs> talk to you later. Bye.